a vampire sucks the life from its victim. The walking dead shuffle through a fallen world. The undead have been enduring cinematic icons for a hundred years. What is the secret power that sustains them? What lies beneath living death? In the wake of war and socialist revolution, expressionist filmmaker F.W. Murnau releases the unauthorized Dracula adaptation, Nosferatu. With the world in the midst of the Great Depression, Todd Browning's official Dracula film is a success, leading to an explosion of monster movies. The cinematic vampire had arrived, and burn them, stake them, cut off their heads, they would not die. Zombie cinema had more humble beginnings and took a less steady foothold in the public consciousness. The Walking Dead lurched into wider panorama in the late 60s and 70s with George Romero's celebrated films. The meaning of stories is told in metaphor. This can be said of much fiction, but is particularly relevant to horror cinema. As Freud would have it, fear is the manifestation of unconscious conflict, the result of confronting repressed psychology. Monsters are those fears externalised, a mirror that contains our insecurities. Subtext can work on many levels. A vampire can represent repressed sexuality, disease and otherness. But like their undead cousins, Count Dracula and his minions serve best as a metaphor for capitalism. Capitalism defined the 20th century. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. At its best, capitalism promises freedom and prosperity, an age of the individual where want replaces need. At its worst, it delivers systemic slavery unbridled consumption and environmental calamity. The vampire is unquenchable desire and the ultimate individual. He has no community, only masters and subordinates. His victims become his servants. They are infected with his ideology and bottomless hunger. The classic tale begins with a property deal. A young real estate agent is given a new assignment. Make a deal with the Prince of Darkness. Dracula expands his dominion through the acquisition of real estate. Respect for property law is a weakness of the vampire. He will not enter a house without being invited. Dracula must have everything he sees. The agent's home, his wife, the blood from his veins. Vampires have an insatiable hunger for acquisition and dominance. As the vampire sails west, he devours the crew. His employees are consumables. Failing that, redundant. The captain of the ship is found dead, bound to the wheel. Early films about zombies were set in Haiti, which is the birthplace of the myth. Voodoo cults could supposedly raise the dead and set them to work in plantations and factories. These stories held a particular horror for Haitian natives who have been victims of the slave trade for over 500 years. From the beginning, zombie cinema has dealt with the reduction of life and labour into capital. The zombie concept was reinvigorated by George Romero's low-budget film, Night of the Living Dead. The dead rise up and attack the living, hungry for human flesh. The film was a huge success, notable for its graphic violence, but also for its social subtext. America was in the midst of social revolution, rising up in violent protest on streets and campuses. Ten years later, Romero took the zombie allegory further in his sequel, Dawn of the Dead. The plague escalates into full-blown apocalypse. A group of survivors barricade themselves inside a shopping mall. 
the mall as a church of consumerism. It provides sanctuary and is signposted with capitalist ideology. Everything is now free, but the reward is empty. The undead are drawn to the mall and eventually break in. Zombies are the ultimate consumers. They are us. As Western culture grapples with capitalism's endgame, the undead have become ubiquitous. They have colonized films, television, books, comics, video games, and the internet. Zombies resonate as symbols of relentless consumerism and ecological corruption, but they also represent revolution. Vampires and zombies are enduring icons of the modern and postmodern age. They speak of the pitfalls of capitalism and warn us of social and environmental collapse. They reveal the truth of ourselves from the distance of fiction. Will our hunger be the death of us?